Hi everybody, thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole Pascal with Topaz Labs and today we are going to talk about the different glow and realistic haze that you can create using the new Topaz Star Effects. I'm finding as I continue to work with Star Effects that I end up using this glow technique almost more than I would the stars because the stars are something I might use for sun imagery but in this type of city image you're looking at here. I really like to um, really highlight the, the little haziness that can come from artificial light. So I want to show you, this is the before image and here's after. Again, it's very subtle but quite beautiful. Here's before and after. So let's first just go over this and I will show you how to go through this particular workflow and then we'll jump on into different types of images. And this is a very easy type of, of workflow with Topaz Star Effects. So I'm just going to get rid of this second uh, background copy and going to make a, another background copy here. So we're taking this original image into Topaz Labs, Topaz Star Effects. Just accessing through filter list to go into Topaz Labs and then Star Effects down there at the bottom. When you enter into Topaz Star Effects, it's very similar uh, interface to the rest of our plugins with the preset panel over here on the left, the main viewing area in the middle, and then your adjustment panel and preview navigator and zoom controls over here on the right. We do have some really nice uh, presets here for you over here on the left. So for example, for this city lights image, I might use one of these city lights presets. You just click on it and it will be transferred over into your main viewing area. To toggle between your before and after, you have before and after, you can do that with your space bar, your left mouse button, or you can come up here to look at this before and after tab if you want it just to stick on the before and then go to the after. You also have the option of viewing in before and after with the split screen icon over here on the top right which is nice to see your before on the left and your after on the right so you can really see where your image has gone. We do have the ability to save, delete, import, and export user-made presets. So if you find that you create a really beautiful type of glow for your uh, a series of night imagery that you want to use on several, you can just press save, and you can save your preset there and then move forward. And then use that preset on other images that might uh, you might want to apply that look to. Now one thing to know about this in particular, presets um, type of behavior, most likely it's not going to look great on every single image. So you will have to come over into your adjustment panel and work on a few things and I'll talk about that here in just a moment. But we do have a couple City Lights presets to, to work with and then we have some several other different types of presets as well. In your menu button down here on the lower left is where you would enter your key. You can check for updates or uh, change some preferences such as opening this preview navigator right here or this preset preview window up here on the top. Let's move over here to the right. Here's your preview navigator where you can scroll in and you can um, go to different zoom levels. It's best to look at Topaz Star Effects with a 100% zoom if possible because it will show you exactly what the effects are doing to your image. If you look at it, for example, maybe at 12.5%, the effects might look a little bit stronger than they actually are, so definitely check it out at 100%. So just use these zoom controls. To get to 100% easily, you can use this one-to-one -one button, and then to get it back to fit into your screen, you can just press the fit and you'll see your entire window. Now the processing time is a little bit slow for this particular image because it has so many effects that are being created. The more star effects or the more glow effects that are applied in a certain image, the longer it's going to take with processing. So that is something that a couple people just asked, but that is the reason. So again, here's before and after. You have your undo button, your redo button, which are pretty self-explanatory, and then as you're working in your workflow, if you find that you get to a point that you really like what you see but you're not sure if you want to apply that or not, you can press a snap shot and this little snapshot allows you to kind of store that particular adjustment that you have right now. So if then we come in and we bring that threshold even lower, we'll, we'll talk about these settings here in just a moment, and you want to take that a little bit brighter maybe. 
I'm going to take another snapshot. Then if I want to maybe take my size up, several different things, I can take another snapshot, and then I can toggle in between all of my different snapshots and see which one I actually do like the best. So that is how the snapshot feature works. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the program, and I want to show you how to create um, Glow that is not stored over here in the preset list, but is a very simple type of workflow. I am going to go one-to-one -to, -one to work on this because, again, it is best to look at the image in one-to-one -to, -one to be able to tell exactly what it's doing to your image. And now all I'm going to do is come down to this bottom and press Reset All. Next to the Reset All button, which will take your image back to no stars whatsoever, no effects being applied, is the Apply button. The Apply button allows you to apply several different types of effects in the same session. You don't have to actually get out of this, um, get out of the session, go back into your host program and take that the image back in to create a different type of star. You can just press apply and you can continue working. Let's see here. Let's start up here at the top of our workflow here. We have broken this into four different stages of your workflow. The first one is your star settings. Here is where you would choose the type of star that you're going to work with. We're not really going to be in this panel today except for the show and hide stars. The show and hide stars is going to allow you to reveal certain stars or make certain effects disappear. But the star type really isn't relevant when it comes to the glow technique that we're going to be going over today. You can look at your image in a stars only mode. The stars only mode is going to show you just the effects and not the, so let's just kind of, let's bring maybe this threshold down and you can see, you'll see just the stars being created, whereas in the combined mode you see both. Now this is obviously looking a little crazy right now, but uh, we'll, I'll go over the technique here for you in just a second. I do just want to show you a few of the different controls though. You do have several star types that you can create, including the traditional, which is right here, um, a Hollywood star, which starts to take a different type of star shape and can really be quite beautiful when trying to create sun effects. But again, Today we're not really going to be going over this stuff, this information. In the main adjustments, the second part of your workflow, you have threshold, which is important for the glow technique. Threshold at one is going to have absolutely no stars whatsoever. At zero, it's going to take all of the smallest light sources there are in your image and apply as many possible effects as it can. When applying glow to an image like this particular image, and I know that looks kind of crazy right now, it's important to take this threshold uh, slider to zero first. Now the luminance slider is going to give you the brightness of your stars. Right now the luminance is set pretty high, but for the glow, your luminance is going to go all the way down to zero. And what this is going to do is allow for all the effects, the actual star shapes, to disappear. So we're going to remove that star shape altogether. You have size, which is going to be very important for the glow effect. And then below that, you have your angle, which is going to go from 0 to 360, which is great when you're trying to work on sun rays or different star effects, but again, not very useful in today's session. Number of points and spread, also not very useful in today's session where we're going to be speaking directly about the haziness that you can apply to your light sources and not necessarily the star shape, which these are applicable towards. If you're interested in knowing more about how all of these different adjustments are working, but we're not going to really be going over them today, we do have an intro to star effects webinar that has been posted on our YouTube channel, and you can check that out for a more introductory type of information. So with that, we're going to move on to our color adjustments, one of my favorites, but we're going to kind of skip over it because we don't have any effects right now that we're working with. But in here we have saturation where it's going to tell you, it's going to pull from your actual light source, the, the underlying color of that light source, and saturate your 
effect with that color. Very important for this type of haze that we're going to be adding to this artificial light in the city. Temperature will allow you to go from cool when you go to the negative, and then when you go towards the positive, it's going to go towards warm. So that's an overall factor where you don't even have to use a saturation. You can just add a warm or cool light to your image. Rainbow strength and rainbow frequency, very awesome on rays and the actual star spikes to work with to make very realistic star colors and frequency of light. However, again, not really relevant to this particular session. Now we get down to what is most important about <laughs> the glow effect that we have come up with here. In our additional effects category, we have secondary points. It allows for you to add um, tiny, tiny, very sharp secondary uh, spikes smaller spikes to the inner circle of your star effects. We're not going to be using that today, but we are going to be using glow. And glow, as you take this up, will start to just put on a glow around the light sources within your image. So as we move that up, you can start to see that a glow starts to appear in the image around the major light sources. And when you first put it up, it's going to have just this kind of white, stark haziness, which can be beautiful for certain images, but here it doesn't really make sense. You want it to be glowing with the actual color of the light. So that's when your color adjustments start to come back in. So let's go back up there and now play with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to saturate this I take it about halfway up to about 0.5, and again, it's going to pull from that underlying source color. So as we take that up, you'll start to see that it becomes a little bit more natural and a little bit more colorful. So very simple stuff. There's only two or three sliders or three or four sliders that you would go to for this technique, and it would be the glow and the additional effects, your saturation and temperature for different coloring, and then when you go back up to your main adjustments, the size. The size will allow for you to take out this really very hazy look and more pinpoint it around the actual light source. So as we take that size down, you'll start to see that it shrinks and it becomes much more natural. So here's before, here's after, and you can see where this can be really beneficial for night scenes and night cityscapes and, and different um, artificial light especially that can create a really beautiful glow around the light source. Again, here's before and after. So that is the technique we're going to kind of be working on today. I do want to talk about the additional effects. One more thing that I missed out on was the ring flare. Ring flare allows for you to add in a ring flare around your light sources. Now when you're dealing with a street light, let's say, you might actually start to see ring flares around them visually at night, and this is where you can start to create that. Now, this is going to not be something that would most likely be a very natural effect for this particular image, but I want to show it to you anyways. There you go. Let's see here. You can kind of start to see it down here in this lower right. It's just a ring flare that starts to occur. I'm going to take that up a little bit more so you see that. And I think the most important thing to remember about these, um, this glow technique is that you can put this beautiful uh, glow and haze into your image without putting in any sort of star effect, which, yes, this is called topaz star effects, but this is kind of a, a different way to go about it. You can take that main adjustment, luminance, and threshold all the way down to get as much glow as you can coming off of your light sources without the actual star effect. So it's pretty cool. Okay, let's cancel out of this and hop on into another image. All right, so I want to go over a different type of image such as one of my new favorites. Here we have this beautiful sun coming through the, the tree here. But what I really want to show you, where I really want to put the glow into it and show you where it can be beautiful on landscape imagery, is where you see these highlights on these, I think these are cat and nine tails um, plants coming through. You see these, it just kind of, the light is hitting off of these beautifully. And I really wanted to enhance that natural glow that's occurring and just kind of bump that up a little bit. And so that's where we're going to go with this particular image. I'll also do a quick sun um, example so you can see that. There we go. 
jumping on into Topaz Star Effects, and I'm just going to press Reset All. And I'm just going to put a quick sun flare on my image. Uh, let's do Sun Flare 2. It came over here in this particular area of the sun where I don't want it, so here I want to show you the show and hide. First, I'm going to hide this particular effect that is happening right here because I want it actually to come through these branches. So all I have to do is take my brush size, have the hide, brush over my star, and it'll go away. Now, I want to show a certain star that might be happening right about here. There we are. Perfect. So that's as easy as the show and hide is. And you might notice if you're a version one owner, it used to be, I believe, add and delete. We decided that was a little misleading because you cannot add stars in areas where they are not auto detected. If they are not detected if, as a light source, you're not able to add in over here, for example, a star. Even if I'm using my brush on there, it's not going to add anything. So we decided to change that from add and delete to show and hide. And that is the reason why. So I'm just going to do a quick um, change for my my sun that I, I, I'm working on here, just to make it a little bit more realistic. I'm going to take that size, leave it the same. Maybe change that to a traditional star. Take my glow down, see if I can get my rays coming through. There we go. There we go. Kind of hiding from you there for a minute. Okay, I'm going to just take my ring flare down and just go with this particular, um, this particular light here. I will take my number of points down to about maybe 10, a few different smaller rays coming through there, something around like that. Now when you get to this, and this is an example of how you would use the apply button. Here I'm going to press apply. First let me show you my before and after. Here's before. Here's after. Let's go to 100% so you can really see it. Here's before and after. I'm going to press apply. And now when I go to my before image, you can see I am on my before image and my star that I just created is there in my before image. So it has been applied and now my before and after are the same thing and I can reset all and still have this effect and now work on the glow of my landscape and of this uh, foreground area. So I'm going to go back to fit so we can see the whole image and I'm just going to go through the same technique that we went through before. I'm not even going to worry about any presets at this point because I know the few sliders that I need to work with. I'm going to take my threshold all the way down. Okay, I'm going to take my luminance all the way down and so I've just made all of my uh, stars or my glow effects disappear. And now I would go into my glow. I was kind of getting confused there. I'm going to go kind of high with it so we see it. Okay, we have quite a few, um, quite a few effects happening in the sun area since that is the main light source and not really a whole heck of a lot happening down here in the the field. If you run across this, there is a reason for that. There's only so many effects that can be put into your image due to the time constraints that it does take to process. You can't have an unlimited amount of stars. I believe the limit is 500. So it'll produce 500 effects, 500 different um, effects in your image, but if you say, okay, well, I want to actually have more effects down here in my field, and they're all up here right now, it's very simple to just go into your host program. I'm just going to press OK, leave my star in there. Go into your host program, kind of just take a section in, and this is just a, a tip for you when working with star effects. If Now I'm going to press reset all and do this again and see if I have a lot more options here. Take my threshold all the way down and look at that. Now I have some serious effects going on in my field whereas before I only had about 10 or 11 or 12. I'm going to take my luminance all the way down and we're going to go through this whole thing. I'm going to go up with my glow. Now the glow is going to not affect the size but how 
bright the glow is. So it's kind of activating it, and then as you take it up, it's just going to be brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. So that is what the glow is doing. The way that you control the size, again, is with the main adjustment size slider, which we'll go to in just a second. But first, I want to go into my color adjustments and take my saturation up, pull from the natural colors that are occurring there. Okay, we're starting to get pretty yellow, and that might be too much, but we'll see as we take that slice, size slider down. Okay, now I'm going to go in my main adjustments, and I'm going to take my size down to a more natural, just kind of where it's twinkling off of my areas where the light's touching it. Okay, so here's before and after. Again, before and after. You can then go back into your additional effects, into your glow slider, and see if maybe you want it to be a brighter effect or a lower effect, but I find that it has some beautiful, beautiful possibilities within landscape imagery where the light is just hitting your foreground and, and flowers and, and, and blades of grass it can have some beautiful effects. I'm going to go into my color adjustments and resaturate just a little bit, and I'm going to press OK and see what happens. So I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, so that's a little bit heavy-handed, but overall, I think we created something pretty beautiful with that beautiful glow and beautiful light in the image without too much work. Here's before and after. All right, so let's move on to another type of image. <clears throat> when it comes to artificial light, you might see in, in naturally in night imagery such as this, a natural haze that's coming off of these lights. So as you see here with these Christmas lights, there is a natural, um, for example, over here on the yellow, you see that haze that's coming around the bulb of the light being created by the light. If Sometimes it doesn't occur, though, and if you want to add that in, it's very, very simple. So same process, but I just want to show you the different types of images that it might be beneficial for. Let's open up star effects again, reset all, and let's just go through this real quick. We'll go into the main adjustments, take the threshold down, the luminance down, the glow up, and I'm going through this pretty fast so you can see just how fast it really can be applied to be getting um, something that you start to get excited about. Saturation's now going up. And size, I'm actually going to take it up. But I'm going to come back into my glow and take the luminance down, the brightness of it down. There we go. So here's before, here's after. It's just a little extra oomph to that light to give it a nice little haze coming around all of these, the bases of the lights all around the actual bulbs. So very quickly able to add in some beautiful light enhancements for here. And that is my very simple, as you can tell, just a few sliders technique to adding really beautiful glow and haze to your imagery. I am going to do one more, and it's going to be a dewdrop image, which I found just works beautiful to, to add in a lovely inner glow to dewdrops that might have some light hitting off of them. Again, same idea. But I do have a couple dewdrop presets over here for you to start off with if you'd like to. Here's number one. Here's before and after. Before and after. So just taking the, the little light that's glinting in each of these dewdrops and just enhancing them quite beautifully in one quick, easy preset. Now, it's important to know that there actually is a star occurring here. So if you ever wanted to blow this up, if you don't want a star effect to be at the center of these little dewdrops, all you have to do is come into your main adjustments and take that luminance down. That'll remove the star effect, and then you can take that glow up. Actually, you removed it quite a bit, so let's just 
take that size up a little. There we go. And this is without the star effect. Here's before. Here's after. So it's as simple as that. Just adding in some natural color back into it. And I added a little bit of warmth for this preset to give it a beautiful kind of warm glow coming from the mitts or coming from the inner, what I like to say, inner glow. <laughs> Here's again before and after. But it's a very simple technique that I think can really add beautiful enhancements to the light sources in your image. And I hope that gives you some ideas. I am going to turn it over to you because I have a bunch of questions that are coming through. If you have any questions, you can type them into your uh your questions module now and again I'm just going to be speaking about the glow and haze today but we do have that introduction to topaz star effects which goes over more the star effect and sun flares. Marsha asks how could you use this on moving water? Mar uh, Marsha that's a great question I actually have a couple images that it just it works gorgeous on the reflections of water so the examples that I have, I don't think I have my um, the river, but I do have this image of the ocean here, and it has some really nice movement happening up here in the um, near the beach. And so, if I wanted to just focus on the water here and not the sun, I'm actually just going to crop it out like I was showing you before, because it just will allow me to get more points of light within the area that I want them. Cancel out of there. Get a few more. There we go. Right above the horizon. Now I'm going to take this into star effects. Okay, and so this gave me quite a few uh, glowing possibilities right here. Oh, I didn't mean to press cancel. I meant to press reset all. We'll try that one more time. Sorry about that. Reset all. So again, all I would do is come to my threshold. I think the important thing to know about working with it on water is to at least what I've found is that it has to be very subtle and, and minimal otherwise it'll be obvious that you added some sort of effect and if you're looking for a natural type of an image that just looks like it has the most beautiful glinting light off of your water then being a little bit on the minimal side I think is going to be best for water so I'm going to take the luminance all the way down again and I'm going to take my size relatively down. I'll probably have to take it down even further, but I want to see what happens at about 0.18. Then I'm going to go into my additional effects, add some glow. We'll go up to about 0.5. It's probably going to be super obvious here at the beginning. Okay, it is. I'm going to leave it right there and go into my color adjustments and go pretty heavy on my color adjustments to, to try to get the reflection the color of the reflection into those that glow and I'm starting to get there I'm gonna go a little bit warmer in my temperature and I'm pretty happy with the brightness of the glow I'm just not too happy with the size it's a little too hazy it's over kinda of looks like a mist of light which is gorgeous in fog and when you're trying to create that hazy effect but for this might be a little much so here's before here's after might take that up just a little bit more okay that is too big for me <laughs> It's all about playing around and just uh, at least when I'm trying to create something that looks really natural, playing around with the size and then the glow strength, how, how heavy handed you go with it. Now for this one you'll see that the glow of the water is actually coming into my horizon. So what I would do at this point is I'd go into my star settings, go into the hide, take my brush, size a little bit down and just go over the horizon to eliminate those uh, that glowing effect happening up there you'll see it just start to disappear now that looks much more natural say okay and that is how I would work with it on water Marsha I hope that helps let's go up to before and after Oh, Ron, I'm sorry, I am saying crop. I'm not really cropping the image. I'm just selecting a portion of the image and taking that selection into 
topaz star effects. I'm not actually cropping the image. Cropping would actually eliminate part of the image. I'm just taking the selection. I'm using the marquee tool to select. And you can use any sort of selection tool you have in your host program to do that with. Or um, you don't have to do that at all. That's just something I wanted to do for this particular image because I was just working on the water and I knew that if I took the entire image with the sun into the the program most of my stars would end up showing up in the sun and the sky Edward asks a great question and something I'd like to address he says the star effects work well with smart object layers in Photoshop it does it <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take this image in, and we'll take it in as a smart object, and I'll show you kind of the issue that you might run into and to be aware of when working within a smart object. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this particular layer for smart filters. Press OK. You'll notice that it's ready to go for a smart filter when it gives you the little smart object icon in that layer. And then I'm just going to take it into star effects. Instead of working with my threshold slider, I'm going to press reset all here. What I'm going to do is just work with my show and hide. Okay, so this is the problem you'll run into on, on the smart filters. It does not keep the brush information in the filter because this brush information is essentially a mask which isn't something that you would use for every image. For example, the next image you take in here is not going to have this exact same um, this exact same bridge in this exact same spot. Even if it is the same bridge, you're, it's probably a different composition. So it won't keep that information. So let me just show you kind of, let's just go along these. There's already some stars, but if I just wanted to add a little additional glow, all I'm doing is taking my brush and putting it on the bridge only and you'll see it all pop up here in just a second. Okay, there we are. So instead of using the threshold, I used the show brush and I'm still going to go through everything else except not use the threshold slider. I'm going to take my luminance down. I'm going to take the, let's see here, glow up. Okay, color adjustments, bring that up. Give you a little bit of a size adjustment. And this goes for when you're saving presets, and that's really kind of the reason why the smart object is not going to hold the information, because it acts like a, a preset almost, except it's saving it within the layer itself in that smart filter as opposed to over here in the preset list. But the same behavior is occurring. So let's now take our, I'm not sure what happened there. Oopsie daisy, I messed with a couple things there, sorry about that. Accidentally pressed a preset over there, I'm just going to click on a couple more things to get that back to where we had it. Take that glow down. Okay, now we're back and I'm just going to take the size down to a place where I want it to be. Okay, so let's say that this is we're happy with this. Again, here's before, here's after. And we say okay. Now essentially you should be able to come back in and all of that information is going to be saved within the smart filter. And it all is except for the brush information. So because we just used the brush on this whole bridge, if we take this image and open it back as a smart filter, that's that particular thing is not saved. However, all of the adjustments are. So all you'll have to do is when you reopen it, let's go back in here, and it's not there. You see that information, that brush information is not there, but all of my adjustments are still there. So it's an issue at this point we are working on trying to figure out how to keep this information in there as a, um, in the smart filters, but if you're just using the threshold, you shouldn't have any sort of problem, but all you'll have to do in the smart filters come back over 
the light sources that you wanted affected by it, and it will give you the exact same look. Here you are. So that is um, how the smart filters work. So it does keep all of that slider information, just not the brush information. One of my favorite images that I've used it on so far is this alley image, which I keep going back to because I think it's just a really great example of where you would see a, a, gl a glow on street lights that looks very natural and without a lot of work can really enhance those two light sources. So I'm just going to take my glow up, except I forgot to. Instead, because there's just two light sources here, I'll just use my show and hide. Take my luminance down. I'm going to take my size up. And and work with my color adjustments a little bit. I could take that much brighter or much lower, but you can see how natural that looks. Here's before and here's after. This is also uh, an, an image where I would add a little bit of ring flare in there because I feel like it would be a natural thing to kind of a cool look. So here's before and after. The ring flare is going to go to the very edge of the glow, and the glow is going to kind of filter, get, it's very much stronger in the middle of the effect, and then it kind of diffuses itself as it gets to the edge, and then the ring flare comes in, which is what you would see in a natural type of image, or, or natural type of effect that you might get in a certain image like this. So here's before again, and after. It's very simple. If you want to check it out, we do have free downloads. They're fully functional. All you have to do is request a free trial through to, um, topazlabs.com slash trials. You just put your email address in there. A trial key will be sent to you. You download the program, and you can test it out to see if these effects are something that might be integrated into your workflow and be something that you might be interested in using. And I hope you are. I'm having a lot of fun with this glow technique, as I'm sure a lot of you that are attending the webinars know by now. It's probably my favorite thing within Star Effects is kind of this, this glow and hazy effect that you can get on your uh, light sources. All right, so thanks, everybody. I really uh, appreciate you joining today, and I hope this was beneficial to your workflow with Star Effects. Bye-bye.